Hello gamers, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. Today I'm going to talk about how to play Cosmic Run Regeneration, one of the games that we won at the Southern Board Game Festival. So to set up the game, you're going to set up the board, shuffle the alien cards, and deal three face up next to the board so that everyone can see them. Next, you're going to set up the meteor deck by taking the six starter meteor cards, shuffling them up, dealing four, putting them on the side, then taking the remaining two, putting them with the regular meteor cards, as well as the required number of missed cards based on player count, and shuffle those into the meteor deck, and then placing the four starting cards that you put aside and put them on top. This makes your meteor deck. Next, you're going to put the honor tokens, the crystals, the meteor tokens, and the red dice into the supply. Next, you're going to take the infodeer tokens, shuffle them up face down, and then place one on each of the 10 indicated locations on the game board. Once done, leave the rest in the supply. After this, you're going to give each player their tech card and ships of the indicated color of their choice. Each player will put their score marker on the 10. Randomly choose a starting player and based on the position, that person will get a crystal. So first player will get one crystal, second player will get two, third player will get three, and fourth player will get fourth. Then set up based on position as well here. So first player will be first, second player will be in the second space, third player and fourth player. Then for the remaining paths to the planets, in the first one, the second player will get a small head start. Everyone else will start the station. In the next planet, third player will get a head start. Everyone else will be at the station. In the next one, fourth player will get a head start. And then there are other planets. Everyone will be starting at the station. After this, give the first player the yellow and white dice. And then we are ready to start the game. Now that we've set up the game, we're ready to play. On your turn, your turn will be broken up into three phases. The meteor phase, the rolling and assigning phase, and then resolving the dice. On the meteor phase, you will flip over the top card. Then based on the top number, you will determine what planet gets hit by a meteor, in which case you will place a meteor token with the single meteor face up. If it is hit a second time, you will flip it over to show that it has two meteors and has been hit a second time. If it has been hit a third time, then you will remove the token and score the planet. However, if that top number has been scored already, then you move on to the next number and that planet will get hit. If that planet has also been scored, then you move on to the third. If every planet on the card has been scored, then it is treated like a miss in which case nothing happens and then you flip the card face down and that will resolve the meteor phase. The next thing you do is the roll and assign phase. So you roll the white dice and the yellow and if you happen to have special abilities to gain the red dice you can use it now. After you roll the dice you'll then assign the dice. You must assign at least one of the dice before you can re-roll the rest of them. So in this instance, I may assign the pair of fours and then re-roll the rest of it to continue my roll and assign phase. Now, when assigning, you can assign to a planet, an alien, or your tech card. When you assign to an alien, the indicated dice tell you how many and the value of those dice are needed to recruit it. If you assign it to the tech card, when you resolve, you will gain one crystal for each dice that you've assigned to the card, at max you can have is five crystals. And 
then there's also the planets. Those are resolved based on the indication of each planet. So for this first one, for each one that you roll and assign to that planet, you may move one space. For this one, for each set of pairs, you may have multiple pairs, allow you to move one space per pair. This one for each three of a kind, you will get to move one space. This one is a four of a kind, and this one is a five of a kind. The sixth planet is special because when assigning dice, they cannot be of equal value. So for example, I can assign, say, two white dice that are, are not equal value and move one space per white dice. Also, there's the yellow dice. If and when you assign the yellow dice to the sixth planet, that will end your roll and assign phase immediately. So if you're going to assign the yellow dice, make sure it is the last dice you assign to this planet. Otherwise, it is treated like a white dice everywhere else if you decide to use it in that manner. And when resolving that dice, you will, instead of moving one space like the white dice, you will move equal to the value of it. So if this was my result after I rolled, I would move a total of six, seven, eight spaces on this track. Now, after resolving that, you will then score the planet if someone has reached the planet uh, as well. Um, both being destroyed by a third meteor strike or someone reaching the planet will initiate the scoring for that planet by everyone getting points based on where they are on the path. So let's say planet three was destroyed, blue would get one point, green would actually get negative six as for not leaving the station. If blue managed to say reach the planet and green got a little farther on his turn and it was not destroyed, but because blue reached the planet, it would also score in this way blue would get 18 and green would get five. And this is true for all of the uh, planets where one, you will score based on your position, two, position, three, your position, four, and five. Six planet is a little different. Instead of based on your position of the, on the path, it is based on your position apparent to other players. So. If we were playing a four player game, then first place would get 10, second place would get five, third and fourth would get zero and negative five. A two player game is scored a bit differently, in which case the player in first would get five and then one point for each space difference between the first and second player. And the second player will gain nothing. Now, in addition to movement, there are these bonus point tokens scattered throughout each path. In order to get them, you must land exactly on them and it will remain hidden for the rest of the game until the end of the game, in which case it will be revealed and tallied. If you go over it, you will not receive any points. When you recruit aliens face up, they are active. If you use them for their one time use ability, they will become inactive and at most a player can ever have is five aliens in front of them, active or inactive. And at any point during their turn, they can turn them in to retire them for honor points. So the way those work is for a pair of the same alien. If you're the first person to turn in two of the same, you will score seven points and cover it up with a check mark of the honor tokens indicating that it has been scored and the next player who does this will receive five and the next one will receive four. And you can do this with all the varying types, a pair, three of a kind, three different ones, and five different aliens. When you resolve your tech card, each white dice, is, each dice assigned to your tech card will gain you one crystal. As I mentioned, five is your max amount of crystals. And at any point during your turn, you may turn in those crystals for special powers uh, or abilities. One crystal will allow you to reroll two dice, two will allow you to reroll five, 
Three will allow you to change the value of one dice, plus or minus one. Four will allow you to change the value of a dice to anything of your choice. Or spending five crystals will allow you to gain the red dice during your roll and assign phase. After scoring each of the six planets, the game will end. Then people, players will tally the bonus points they got from these tokens. They will get one point for each crystal. They will also get one point for each alien that they did not retire. Um, when retiring aliens, as I mentioned here, um, you can retire one alien at a time, uh, but you will only receive one point. So it's better to retire them in sets. And whoever has the most points, after tallying all points, whoever has the most is the winner. Anyway, that's how you play Cosmic Run Regeneration. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe. Leave a comment down below for what you think. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.